somehow you always one up yourself. <laughs> Every single time. But this is old. It's new but old. Right. <laughs> well, th this is surprising, is what it is. Um, and you have a really, really big surprise for everybody. This, I think, this is pretty much yeah, the that's, biggest. Yeah, that's the giveaway right there. This is the. This is pretty much like the biggest piece of news. I've had a lot of doubters, a lot of haters. I know a lot of Kiwis that have been very like on the fence with this whole project. With like all I've really shown is me getting this, the possession of this car. Last time I was in this car was 2004. I literally sold this. Tony's my wife sold her show Benz that was like Lexus V8 twin turbo bagged. Like we had to sell these to fund drifting because I just discovered like drifting at that time. So yeah, me and this car go way back 2004, so 20 years ago. Yeah, we won the skid fest, which then for me was the pinnacle. Coming from freestyle motocross, I hadn't discovered drifting. We were doing a lot of drifting. I've been in a lot of trouble in this car. Uh, it's been in the impound yard a lot of times, but yeah, 2004, had to part with it. Wait, um, so you actually, like street drifted or street skidded or oh, yeah. what, what would you call did it, it back did then? Did it all, bro. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't call it drifting, but we, we were linking corners and yeah, I definitely don't condone know. street racing, but I was in a lot of trouble. I paid my dues and I, I learned a skill from it, but we'd never had like racetracks that we could go to and do drifting. You know, it's one, so, we didn't have the money to do it. It's kind of funny because it's almost like it happens naturally, right? You, you have a rear wheel drive car, it has a lot of power, and well, what do you do with it? You know, you don't even know, like yeah. you didn't even watch videos no, on there was drifting or anything? The v, v op, the, you know, V op friggin' option DVDs. There was no video option, like, I didn't even have a DVD player at that point in my life, you know? Like, I was just trying to get 20 bucks gas so I could go do some skids. We didn't even have cameras. It wasn't about like Instagram fame, Facebook, like, it was just you and your, and your homies and go out and, yeah, rip some skids and have some fun. So it's crazy that this thing has come now full cycle, 20 years anniversary, well, 20 year anniversary of being a, a part, I guess if that's even an anniversary, but yeah, we are now back. Actually got to put the OG Firsty plate back on it. So when I sold the car, I kept the Firsty license plate. So in New Zealand, I don't know, New Zealand car culture is like, everyone's got personalized number plates. Not everyone, but it's like, it's a big thing and you're known for your license plate, right? So Firsty, obviously slang for Thirsty. New Zealand, we're only allowed six characters on our plates. Um, and rotaries drink a lot of gas. So that's where the plate came from. It's been on a lot of cars, seen a lot of trouble. But how did you source it? How did you get it back? Did you always have contact with the owner when you sold it? Um, well, it's been through, I don't know, 10 different people. Like now the ownership papers, there's a long list between me. And so the last owner was Stefan and it actually got repainted. It was white at one point. It was fully stripped out. I remember it being on Tradebee, which is like in New Zealand, that's like our eBay. And it was like six grand and dudes are always messaging me or tag me in it again, bro, buy it back, man. It's like six grand, you need to have this car back. And it was fully stripped out. And I'm like six grand at that point in my life was so far. Like I was just hustling to try to get some tires to go bloody do some drifting in the weekend, you know, with the RX-7. So, it got to a point where Stefan in 2017, he fully rebuilt the whole car. He got in contact with us and asked if I could redo all the bombings that were down the side of it. He asked if, he, if you know, he could kind of like, I wouldn't say immortalize, because it actually is the OG, um, but he wanted to restore it back to how it was when I had it, which he did an amazing job of, but it wasn't how I had it. And like with this new project, with coming back to D1GP, building something unique, I'm like, how freaking crazy would it be to the last time I was in this car was 2004, 20 years ago, and I won the New Zealand for Skid Fest, which to then was the pinnacle of, that's, just, that's the craziest thing I could do in four wheels. I, was, I had a lot of broken bones. I'd just been told I was paralyzed for life from freestyle motocross. Um, so burnouts was like the thing. So for me to come like full cycle and uh, be back in this thing, and my first like big drift event was D1GP World All Stars 2007 at Irwindale. Yeah, that's where, where I we met, met you. Right? Yeah. So, I met a lot of people at that event and it's pretty crazy to go now full circle back to D1GP uh, and could be competing against, you know, there's still a lot of my heroes, the OGs still competing, Kawabata-san, you know, out there and still competing in that championship. We got Matsuyama, they're still finishing off their car. So, you know, you've got all these young drivers and young cars. Well, I consider myself an old driver and an old car. Well, I guess in, in Japan, I'm like middle-aged because there's dudes like still late 50s that are massive inspiration still absolutely shredding. 
You know, like at Ken Block was 55. No one would have even thought, you know, still just living life absolutely full throttle and just sending it for the fans, man. That's what this is for. So then how long have you had it back? Um, about two months. So this has been two months from just chopping it to pieces. And people, you know, obviously what I've showed through my YouTube, people like, you know, a lot of mixed opinions, like, fuck, you're destroying such a like, you know, this was the poster child car for so many. And yeah, I appreciate that. And that was a, a chapter of its book. And I'm not closing that book. I'm writing another chapter and I'm gonna create more history with this thing. Um, and for me, emotionally, to be back in this car, um, but here in Japan, competing against the best, I think it's just gonna be the craziest feeling. It's, it's such a cool story to me because you could have just got another chassis and you could have built like a, a updated version yeah. of this car. But instead, you actually went out. Uh, it had and to be the same. Pursued car, man. the actual car. And I looked at 808s. I was looking at 808s, and I'm like, fuck. I just, yeah, I had to do it. And then Stefan was in a position to sell it. I told him the story. I'm like, bro, this is what I want to do with it. And he was kind enough to thank you, Stefan. I appreciate it a lot because I know this meant a lot. I had to like get the brake clean and get my autograph off because when <laughs> Stefan finished it, he revealed it at my Mad Mike Summer Bash event. Um, he had met, he signed the dash, um, so I've just tried to break clean the, the <laughs> autograph off the dash. But that um, would be very weird to have your own autograph on your car just driving okay. around. So, but this is and the power plant. Let, let's take a look at the engine and then so, let's talk yeah, a little bit yeah, about everything. Of course, here. Rotary is the only so, thing. Only uh, thing I know. I forgive us, guys. This is Tokyo Auto Salon setup day, and you know me. I always want to try to get the scoop, and. Um, I always love shooting with Mad Mike, whether it be his Pikes Peak car or any of his drift cars or anything that Mad Mike does, it's gold. So what are we looking at here? So in a quad rotor, back to, you know, arguably the favorite, we got a lot of quad rotors. We've just revealed the world's first five rotor. You know, we've got, you know, three rotors, two rotors, but yeah, I feel like this car, when I had it, would have this was beyond the wildest dream. It had a had essentially exact same setup, but just a two rotor. So it was a 13B PP, easily enough to win burnout comps uh, and have some fun. So, but yeah. that was was that NA back then? NA, yeah, okay. yeah. Essentially the same, but just not injected. It just had an IDA, one fuel line in, drink all the gas, hence the license plate thirsty. But uh, yeah, now this is a TCP built to Quado. Well, we did it. We did as much as we can at, for like two weeks at the Mad Lab. I uh, went to IMR for like two weeks uh, to do all the fab. He fitted the NA MX-5 rear end, so it's all IRS in the back. Um, and then we just needed to get on a boat and get it up here to Japan um, so Kawato could do his thing. So Kawato's built the motor, it's a brand new 26 b quad rotor. Similar to what we ran in Jet Bull, but a little bit more crazy. We've got a lot more development since then. It's gonna run nitrous. The thing is like, it's pretty much good. All the hard work is done, like the fab work, fitting everything, making it all like where all the steering is Hachiroko steering subframe. So we got low standards. Jay was kind enough with this time frame. He was already like body dropping an RX3 and had put a Hachiroko steering rack into a sub into a um, cross member. So he sent his cross member over. Yeah. Then it's got Techno Toy arms. It's got some uh, car factory eye arms. So it's a bit of a mixture of stuff in the steering. Um, but yeah, EFI hardware. Heltec R5 will run the whole thing, so. What are you expecting to make power-wise out of this? Well, this will make 600 wheel. We've got the same setup pretty much in Mad Bull, but we're perking this one up with NOS. So I reckon 700 horse wheel, no torque. It'll still be the same as everything else, but just, I don't know what torque is anyway. We just <laughs> sit it, drive it at the RPM, drive it up high. That is yeah. so neat. Okay, so then body-wise. Yeah, still steel factory 12A nose. I mean, just this piece of trim here. It's probably like a thousand bucks. You know, really? the badge, like it's all original. I just, I can't believe you're gonna compete in a professional drift series in this car. Why not? Like, why not? It'll entertain, it'll, I'll enjoy it and it'll entertain, bro. There's the two main things right there. L tell me about the wheels. This is. Oh, uh, you know, always so working different. with Rotiforms, just the bomb, you know, like every project, it always comes down to like, what do we do with wheels? You know, so this, and I can, I don't know, I've always have a lot of ideas cycling up my head. Usually it's a quick sketch, send them off to Brian and Jace, and then the boys there, they, um, 
yeah, do them all. So done like kind of classic style. This is a center they've already had. We've we've done which are LHR, but like minor details, like that to me are major details. There's one inch of concave there instead of it just being like a flat face. Mm. Uh, we're running like a six inch lip. Uh, it's a two piece but welded, so it's welded on the back side. Um, obviously the contrast between the white and then the gloss white and then the polished lips. So, but this is going to be your actual drift setup. Yeah, this is drift setup. Mate, you know what I run, what I bring, man. <laughs> like, Wait, so, so then, uh, what about the triple eights on here? Yeah, so we run triple eight. We won the Formula Drift Championship on our triple eight R drifts, um, and so yeah, we'll be running the exact same tire, just obviously a much smaller tire size. This is a fifteen by ten, um, and we'll be running around a two two five or a two three five against you? like we got Matsuyama who's revealing his Yaris. Those boys are running like two ninety five twenty, so it's a big freaking tire. Wait. But this thing is going to be light and just. I don't know, I feel like it's still, okay, we haven't built this car to win the championship. I miss a couple of rounds because of other commitments I've already had. But like I say, entertainment and enjoying the sport of drifting is like the priority, so everything. Only, only person running 15s, I'm sure. Oh yeah, of I'm course. I'm sure. And I, dude, this year in Formula Drift, no sorry, last year, 23, we were the oldest car in the, in the whole field, in the <laughs> RX-7, Humble, which is a 1992, Mazda RX-7. So this being a 1976, man, we are well, well by far the oldest. There, there's no cutoff then, I guess. That, that's that's good. <laughs> well, I just like, I don't know. I love doing shit that's different. I love trying to prove a point that, you know, there's set recipes, there's an the easy way to go. If, you, if, if you're in the sport to chase podiums, for sure, this is not the car for you. And it's floor but, door. Yeah, yeah, all the doors still work, like, yeah. Can we take a look at it real quick? Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much mounted the seats in the back, so just weight transfer. Did you have to uh, update the cage and stuff? For yeah, so, thing? dude, the thing is, I already had a roll cage, but it was just a friggin' own built roll cage that was in it. So, D1GP runs under like FIA spec, so we had to cut the whole cage out. Quato's done the whole roll cage in house in his shop. Quato, TCB Magic, he really is a magician, like, honestly. I don't know anyone else out there that just actually can do everything. Like from not just building the motors, tuning the motors, but he, you know, we look at Humble, the RX-7, all the fabrication, all the bodywork, he's designed and built all the fiberglass, so the TCP Magic body kit, like the whole lot suspension setup, crew chiefs, like our team, we've won championships together. He's like the best dude to have as a friend, like, he literally is a magician. And it's not just drift cars. He built that Pikes Peak car the, the for Pikes you. Pikes Peak, that's right. Like we, we've never done any time attack stuff together at all. His, before he was doing drifting, was like right into like time attack and stuff. So he built that, you know, a lot of new technology in that car. And we managed to get two world records and I got to scare the shit out of myself for 10 minutes <laughs> going up Pikes Peak. Arguably the craziest, funnest, biggest challenge thing I've ever done on four wheels. This is... This might top it though. Yeah, this is really, really something yeah. else. So then what about the transmission? Transmission is HET six-speed sequential. It's the same gearbox. I run on my taxi. Link runs the same gearbox. Um, HET is a New Zealand company. Yeah, Nev I can't tell you how good the part support is because I've never had to order parts. Let's uh, let's take a look we at the We can look in the back, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is really special because I don't know if I've ever seen one of these ever drifting. Oh, no. Neither have I. This one way back in the... Well, there's, there's plenty of these drifting on the streets back in New Zealand. Well, that's the actual OG plate right there. You can see all the holes and how many cars and how much trouble that thing's been in. <laughs> and I kept that. Like, I got offered a lot of money for that plate when I sold it. And uh, like I say, when you're young, it's like you're known for your plate. So, yeah, kind of kept it in there. So we got radium, full radium fuel system. It's hard to see here, but at the moment, so KD, uh, KW are uh, making all the custom shocks for it. Uh, so we've got, uh, at the moment, it's got some STs in there, which is KW's like, it's like a bit more of the entry line stuff, which I don't know, we may even run. Like Link runs that suspension. This is the exact setup Link runs in his MX-5. For you guys that don't know, Link's my son that's been ripping those little He's MX-5. He's little you. Little, yeah. He's not going to be little you for much he, longer. He's going to be bigger than you. Yeah, I know. He's like frigging <laughs> yeah. up there now. But yes, yeah, so there's a lot of fab underneath that you can't see. But so much of has been cut out. Yeah, it's it's so interesting to me because what do you think the original folks at Mazda 
would have thought. Was well, it? we work with them and they can't believe the stuff we do. Like from the Pike Speed Car, you know, that they were so proud of that thing. Like I remember Kawato and I last year after Pike's Peak, end of the year, went back, had a big recap. We uh, caught the Shinkansan down to Hiroshima, went to the HQ, had the big meeting, talking about this project and some other future projects. But um, we were, or they played the uh, YouTube of Pike's Peak. And me and Kawato are like, oh yeah, you know, reminiscing such an amazing time of our lives. And we look around and the whole, the whole office, bro, they had all broken down with emotion. They were that proud. And uh, Maida-san, who's like head of motorsport, is like, he says, motorsport is our treasure and we must never lose our treasure. And I just thought that was the freaking coolest thing to hear and have their support. Even, you know, of course we're, you know, promoting new stuff, but at the same time they're, they're supporting us to do crazy stuff. Putting four rotary technology into brand new Mazda 3s to do pikes, building old 1976 cars to, well, I mean, what's cool to me is that they're supporting you when this car has been out of production for so long, you know, nearly, almost 50, nearly 50 years, 50 years yeah. but it's not about that. It's about brand recognition. It's about yeah. the love for motorsport, as yeah. you mentioned, you yeah. know, and that's why something like this exists. And can, I just cannot wait for you to spin tires on this oh, i cannot mate. wait to see you Me it's D1. not far away like honestly like it's literally plum and wire because it all like i say the hard work's done of all the fab work and figuring everything out um there'll be a little little bit of test work with all the steering because obviously we've really grafted so many different kind of aspects into that but so so miata rear end or is it N what yeah namx5 miata which is first gen rear end uh front end is old school a86 rear steer uh with a trd rack so it is a hybrid of sorts of all different types of uh, yeah. pieces of cars put yeah. together to make it work. For make it work, man. And who yeah. knows? No one's tried it, but no one's tried a Mazda 3 with a 4 rotor. No one's tried an RX-8. No one's tried like a lot of these things that we've built, MX-5s with quad rotors and like, but that makes the challenge that much more rewarding when you get the results. And results are not podiums for me. Like results are just like going to the track, entertaining, Freaking putting smiles on people's faces and giving you guys your 20 bucks worth when you come through the gate, you know? So, yeah. Dude, I can't wait to see you. I'm gonna come to D1 oh, man. for sure yes. to check you uh, sliding this thing. That would be yeah, so Yeah, it's gonna cool. be noisy. You'll hear it from the States anyway. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you guys watch this video, it will have been revealed already. So yeah, as always, thank you guys so much. Hey, and thanks to KW. Thanks yeah. to KW. Hey, for... and if you don't follow my channel, Mad Mike Weir, oh, yeah. man, I'm actually doing some YouTube stuff now. Eh? Like, yes, good. I've just always been Insta and stuff, but now we've got like 150K, so we're like slowly growing, but. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Okay, well, I just so... doing a bit more of the behind the scenes. So we've actually done like a behind the scenes clip of this car. We've got more coming oh, really yeah. in depth. Right. With because... me actually hanging off the grinders and chopping this thing to pieces and all that sort of stuff. You're thing. actually showing uh, what you guys are doing to build this. Just like now we're showing on what me and Link get up to on a day-to-day -day basis pretty okay. much, because there's a lot of crazy stuff if you guys watch our stuff then definitely subscribe to mad mike and all his antics like subscribe and love <laughs> below bro <laughs> awesome. peace out hey thanks for watching if you want to support us directly go to larrychenprints.com i print and sign every single one of these this is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall